Hello. Today I'd like to discuss the basics of gait evaluation. In gait evaluation, you're looking for clues on what is both wrong and right for the patient. Is there signs of short leg? Is there a sign of other biomechanical issues? Is there a sign of old injuries? Is there a sign of weaknesses or inflexibilities? that may need to address, and gait evaluation can be an excellent tool to uh, discover what is ailing a patient and how to help that patient. So we always start with the head, and we work our way down as podiatrists into the feet. So we start with the head, we look at uh, head uh, motion from side to side, look if there's any natural tendency to be more to the left or more to the right, you can see with this patient that it's, there's a little lean uh, to the left side. That's very natural for the patient. Uh, then we go to the shoulders. Shoulders, we're looking at uh, whether there's a shoulder drop. Now, naturally, there's a slight rounding of the shoulder on your dominant uh, leg or your dominant uh, arm. So, in a right handed person, there's a natural uh, roll to the right side that can look like a, uh, sh um, a shoulder drop, which really isn't. On a left-handed person, it's, of course, the opposite. Then you look at the motion of the shoulders. Do the shoulders look in the transverse plane, whether they're moving symmetrically, or do they look jammed up, or is one side seem to be moving and the other side uh, fairly tight? So we're looking at the, just the natural rhythm of those shoulders, uh, which usually then correlates to what the arms are doing. So we look at arm swing. We look at whether the, uh, the elbows are being held in the same position, uh, whether one is more flexed than the other or more extended than the other. We look at the swing of the arms. Do the, does the swing of the arms uh, show us that, the, um, that the, uh, one arm moves more than the other? or that one arm moves across the body more. And this all can help us in, in discovering whether uh, there's hip issues or shoulder issues or short leg uh, problems. Then we look at the hips, and we look and see at the hips if there's even motion, uh, if, the, if, if there's more uh, dominance to one side, where the one hip seems to be moving a lot more or a lot less. Uh, if there's a Trendelenburg, which means a collapse to one side, uh, which you can see in, in sometimes either weakness or avoidance of pressure. You look and see if the hips are centered over the spine and whether the, there is a, uh, a tendency to, to shift outward which can be a sign of a herniated disc or even a, uh, a uh, damage to the hip joint itself. So we, so we look at the hip heights, we look at the hip motion, we look at the hip position over the spine, um, we look at the relationship of the hip to the low back. Does that look tight? Or does it look, is it, it look like there's a lot of good, healthy motion? going on. Uh, so this patient looks very smooth at their hips. Their hips are moving very symmetrically. Um, she has a more flat back. There's not a large uh, uh, lordosis present. Then we go down and look at the knees. Now the knees, you're looking to see if uh, the knee joints are flexing and extending fairly equally. Uh, you're looking to see if uh, the, the knees are, the kneecaps themselves are externally rotating too much or internally rotating too much. Uh, and it's really important because the feet tend to do different things. The right foot tends to function a little different than the left foot on most people. So normally that would correlate to the left knee working a little differently than the right knee. And I, and I try to challenge myself and try to decide if I see one knee internally rotating more or one knee being a little stiffer than the other. 
And I think with this patient, you get a good feel that, that her knees flow very easily. They stay fairly centered. The, the kneecaps track a little bit uh, internally rotated, uh, but that's with normal pronation. So then we, we go down to the foot, and we'll look at first how they strike the ground. Are they heavy heel walkers? Are they um, uh, more midfoot to toe walkers? Uh, how do they move across their foot? Is it smooth or is it very jerky? Uh, so that's, that can give you a real good clue of whether they have a jarring gait or a gait that tends to, um, that w would give you problems that, where they have difficulty uh, moving across their foot. Then we look at the heels. We see if when, after the patient lands on the ground, whether the heel tends to rotate in with pronation or out with supination. You can tell with this patient as she lands that she tends to supinate a little bit more than she should and more on the left side than the right side. So that, would, that should be adjusted in her orthotic device or in, the, in the, her shoe selection. If she's in a motion control shoe, maybe she should go down to a, a, a neutral or suspension shoe. So uh, the next part of this video will be on barefoot walking, and we'll, we'll get a little bit more um, view of how the, uh, the foot moves with, without a shoe. But I like to have a patient walk with uh, two or three pairs of shoes. I try to encourage them to bring in different styles of shoes, uh, have them always walk barefoot and always walk with their shoes and try to get an idea of how stable the shoes are, how they make the person walk. And as you do this over and over again, you'll get a really good feel of how uh, fluid the patient is and where are the areas of stress that may need to be addressed. I hope this uh, basic introduction to uh, gait evaluation will help you and as you see the hundreds of varieties and the thousands of varieties of gait patterns, you'll be able to have a really strong idea of how that, that knowledge can help your patients. Thank you very much.